Uh, my name is Yasser Ali. I'm a security analyst at uh, HackerOne. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, bug bounty, bug hunting, and uh, uh, how to uh, start your journey in bug hunting, uh, how to find vulnerabilities, how to report these vulnerabilities in an ethical way. So uh, the agenda for today is, uh, first we will talk about uh, bug, bug hunting and the bug bounty platforms. Uh, then we will talk about uh, uh, preparing yourself in psychologically and uh, technically uh, for uh, this, uh, this field. Uh, then we will talk about sharpening your tools, what the tools that the bug hunters use uh, using, and uh, what the, uh, the most, uh, the fav their favorite tools in bug hunting. Uh, then we will talk about uh, hunting the lowest hanging fruits. The, this is the, like, the, the easiest vulnerabilities that you can find in uh, websites and uh, web servers. Uh, then we will talk about uh, writing an effective report. Uh, so whenever you, you, to, uh, you talk to the triage team or to, you sending a vulnerability to a website or to, to a platform, how you write an effective report that the triage team will, uh, will, uh, can understand and can, uh, uh, can handle it uh, very quickly. Uh, then we will talk about, uh, for people who want to start their journey in bug hunting, what they should do today. Uh, then we will uh, go for questions. So let's start with bug hunting and bug bounty platforms. What is a bug hunter? As you can see here, uh, bug hunting is like, it's uh, a new uh, invented job. It's like started like um, uh, officially. In, uh, it, it was since long time ago, since like 2003 and before this. Uh, uh, in, after 2013, uh, this, uh, this activity started to be uh, uh, very familiar, uh, bug bounty platforms started to uh, raise like uh, uh, HackerOne and other uh, bug bounty platforms. So as you can see here, there is a lot of hackers uh, and a lot of, uh, as you can see, they getting this money. So let's go for bug hunter is uh, just a guy who sitting behind the keyboard and he make millions like every month for, uh, not all of them for sure, the, the, the professional guys. Uh, so. Uh, so yeah, a, a bug hunter is the guy who sits behind the keyboard and he makes millions of uh, hernias uh, without even going to work. Uh, bug bounty platforms, you have a lot of platforms like HackerOne, uh, like uh, Bug Crowd, like uh, uh, there is also Synac and uh, Cobalt, uh, Bug Bounty HQ and Hacken. Hacken is the, the one that, uh, it's a Ukrainian one, and uh, it will start, um, I, I think it started yesterday or something. So yeah, if you want to participate in this, uh, in this uh, uh, website or this bug bounty platform, you just go to this website and sign up as a researcher. Yeah, okay, so bug, bug hunting is not like other, like other jobs. It's, 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 it needs, uh, like you, you should prepare yourself in psychologically. Uh, pen testing, for, for example, all you need is you get a job, you go do pen testing. If you find vulnerabilities, it's okay. If you don't find, it's, it's fine. So it's all about uh, your skills. In bug hunting, you should prepare yourself for something. If you're not able to, uh, I mean, handle your, your, your frustration, uh, for example, you can spend one month trying to find vulnerabilities and you end up find nothing, or you found like 100 vulnerability, and all your vulnerabilities will, 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 will mark it as duplicate or, uh, or not, not, uh, not applicable, so you will not get anything. So it's very hard to get a bug hunting as a, a full-time job uh, if you're not very, very professional in that. Uh, technically, uh, yeah, so f first, uh, if you want to get in th into this field, you have to prepare yourself in a technical way. Technical way means you have to concentrate on one field, either web application pen testing, mobile application pen testing, or uh, like IoT pen testing. But most of people are concentrating on the uh, web application pen testing. So if you if you want to start your trip in uh, your journey in bug hunting, you should at least uh, know everything about web, web uh, servers and uh, uh, and web. For yeah. So. Uh, also, you have to understand and uh, uh, prepare yourself in, like, you, ha you have to understand the operating system, the different operating system. We have a lot of operating systems like Windows, uh, Linux, Mac. You have to understand how this operating system works, how they operate. 
and the different vulnerabilities in this operating system. Uh, you also have to at least get a Linux distro like Kali or whatever or Mint. You have to uh, uh, install it in your local machine, for example, in VirtualBox, and you start like poking around, start to uh, ha see how this works, start to uh, install a web server, see how this web server works, see how the HTTP protocol works. Uh, whenever you go and try to type, for example, Google.com, what happened in the background? How the DNS works? How the HTTP protocol works? How the TCP protocol works? Uh, you, you should also at least learn a programming, programming language. For example, if you want to start in, for web, you have to at least uh, w learn how PHP works. You, you should learn how to script or to program in PHP and uh, MySQL. And you, you should also know how, to, how, how PHP works with MySQL and how also the web server handles this uh, request or this, uh, the execution of this uh, code. Okay, so let's start. Um, uh, for, uh, t to be uh, clear, uh, bug hunting is different than pen testing in one thing. Uh, bug hunting, you don't have to exploit the vulnerabilities that you find. Bug hunting is just you, you provide a proof of concept that, if, for example, if you find a remote code execution, you tell them, okay, I have found a remote code execution and stop at this level. You don't try to escalate your privileges. You don't try to, uh, to, to get access to the, uh, like the, the entire network or to try to download uh, any files from the uh, server. Uh, so, uh, so most of the, the, the concentration here, or the focus of the bug hunters uh, is in the reconnaissance phase. Reconnaissance phase means, uh, okay, so for example, yahoo.com. Yahoo.com opened a bug bounty program and you have to find as much as vulnerabilities as you can. So the first thing you will try to do is try to find uh, uh, subdomains. You don't, I, I think it's very hard to find vulnerabilities in the main domain, like for example, yahoo.com. So you have to find like uh, uh, legacy subdomains, uh, like uh, for example, old.yahoo.com, uh, employees.yahoo.com, and start to see what you can find in these web subdomains or this website. The favorite tool we use here is uh, Sublister. It's, it's doing like uh, enumeration of, uh, uh, of uh, subdomains. And uh, the, the guy who coded uh, Sublister is here with us here today, Ahmed Abu Ela. So uh, yeah, this, uh, this is a very, very effective tool and we use it almost every time we, tr we start uh, participating in a bug bounty program. So it does uh, just uh, try to enumerate the subdomains, try to brute force the subdomains uh, in alphabetical uh, order, and it also go uh, to Google and Yahoo and do passive reconnaissance and try to get uh, uh, subdomains. We also have AWS bucket uh, dump. It uh, try to find the unclaimed, um, the unclaimed uh, instances by Amazon. For example, if you have a website, this website or the subdomain is, uh, uh, is the C, have a C name is pointing to, uh, for example, uh, one, two, three, uh, dot, uh, Amazon com. for example. Uh, if this subdomain is not uh, claimed, uh, you can find this out and you can claim it and you know, get access to this uh, subdomain. We have also Dearbuster is a very, very effective tool and their search, their search and Google, uh, Google hacking and archive.org. For Dearbuster, all it does is you give it a website, it starts to try to find the folders and uh, files in this website. For example, if you give it like yahoo.com, it will do like uh, 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 brute forcing. For example, yahoo.com slash admin, yahoo.com slash legacy code, yahoo.com slash employees, yahoo.com slash login dot whatever, PHP. So this will give you an idea about the hidden folders and you start to, uh, to find the hidden folders in these uh, web applications and you might find the, uh, like further joicy information. Uh, archive.org also, uh, I remember that in archive.org I was able to, uh, to find uh, a very sensitive file. It, it, it has been removed. I was starting a bug bound, uh, the, the, uh, participating in a program. Then I, the, the registration page is, was not there. So I go to archive.org. Archive.org is just getting like a cache version of the website, or old version of the website. So when you go there, you, will, you might find like uh, the deleted files. You will find it in archive.org. So you'll get an idea about uh, the, uh, the, the, the page that is still there, but it, it has just the, the, I mean, it has been removed from the UI. You cannot see it, but it's still there. So it's very effective. Also, uh, Nmap is uh, like a network mapper. It's, uh, it's does, uh, it does like uh, network scanning. 
uh, for open ports and uh, and it gives you an idea about the protocols that uh, are uh, running on this uh, and the services that are running on the web server so you might find like for example like open ftp port or uh, open uh, remote desktop uh, port with uh, or open uh, any any port open with like default credentials or uh, anonymous access we have also Perviseed. Perviseed is one of the most, or maybe it's the most effective tool we use. Uh, Perviseed is just a proxy. Uh, it, it does like, um, it, it, it makes a proxy between you and the website, between the browser, your browser and the web server or the website. So uh, uh, Perviseed, uh, you can do a lot of functionality. You can see the, uh, yes, like this screenshot, if you can see. This is the vulnerability I have found in uh, Windows, Windows Employees Machine. It, it enables me to change the password of any, uh, any, uh, any ap uh, applicant. Uh, so uh, for, it's, it's very simple, as you can see. This screenshot is the, fr the request from, uh, from my, the, web, the browser to the Windows server. So the browser here, as you can see, it's, it's, it sends uh, the, the, the password, the password you want to change, and the user ID. For the user ID, all you have to do is after intercepting this request, and you, see, you will see that, you see the password and the confirmation password, all you have to do is change the, uh, the ID of the employee. So instead of you, uh, changing your own password, you can change any password of anyone. So it's as simple as this, it's very, very, very simple. Uh, in the lowest hanging fruits also we have unprotected admin areas. So for example, uh, any website slash admin.com slash administrator administrator slash, slash cpanel slash uh, uh, whatever, uh, like employees.php. Uh, sometimes you find this, uh, this uh, administrative uh, panel or dashboards has very like just uh, normal, uh, the default credentials like admin, admin, Username admin password admin username admin password one two three four five six. It's very very uh, common in uh, even in the enterprise, uh, especially in the enterprise uh, environment that you find the, uh, like default credentials. So it's very very easy to find this. Uh, f lo we call it lowest hanging fruit and just get access without like uh, investing a lot of time. Uh, we have also the um, the unclaimed subdomains. We talk about the uh, AWS uh, bucket dump. Uh, so these unclaimed subdomains are uh, whenever there is a bug bounty program. The first uh, reports we got is this uh, uh, this uh, kind of reports for unclaimed uh, subdomains and uh, legacy uh, subdomains. Legacy subdomains is the old subdomains that's it's still there, but it's not used, being used actively by the website, but still there and the, the vulnerable code might be still uh, exist. Um, yeah, software with no vulnerability. Sometimes you will just go to the website, you start hacking the website, you will find like a software running, or for example, a vulnerable version of WordPress. So you don't have to do anything. You'll just identify that this WordPress version is vulnerable. You will go to uh, like, for example, go to Google and find, uh, search about these vulnerabilities in this version, if it's a very old version, and you just exploit it, or send the report and tell them, okay, you have a vulnerable version installed in your web server, and this, web ser this vulnerability is, the, for example, XS, SCSRF, whatever. Uh, business logic flows. Uh, for example, this one is a business logic flow. Uh, business logic flows, it's, it's, it's very, very common, and it's very easy, even if you are not technical, and you want to start your journey in bug hunting, the first thing you should concentrate on find in finding a vulnerability is the business logic flaws. Business logic flaws, it's, 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 it's how the, the application works. It's not technically a vulnerability, okay? So for example, this one is, yeah, this one is technically, is, it, because they should, uh, they should make sure that uh, the user ID, which is changing the, uh, change his password, is the same as the session, uh, session ID. But business logic flaws is, for example, uh, if you, uh, there is like uh, a website, you want to, uh, to want, uh, you should verify your identity. So we have to go from uh, point one to point six. So for example, in the URL, you will find one dot PHB, two dot PHB. Whatever you go further step, you will find the, the, the URL will increase. So if you just go to the URL and type six dot PHB, you'll find yourself in the latest last stage without doing like four and five and uh, and three. So this is the business logic. It's very very effective and very very uh, very uh, uh, very hard for the programmers or the coders to 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 uh, 
to uh, to uh, to handle while they they writing the code, and it's very uh, very easy for the hunters to find while they doing uh, their checks. So file upload functionality. Uh, all of us, whenever we, you subscribe in a website, you go, you find yourself like um, for Facebook Facebook.com. The first thing it asks you to upload a, a photo. Okay, so this file upload functionalities or uploading your CV for like the uh, uh, careers websites. Uh, whenever you find a, 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 vulnerable, uh, a file upload functionality, you should invest a lot of time in this functionality. Why? Because uploading, uh, if you misuse this functionality, you will end up having a remote code execution and you will just hack the entire server and you know this, this is the, the, like, the, the most dangerous or the, uh, the most severe uh, vulnerability. So we have to invest some time in this uh, kind of vulnerabilities. Yes, sometimes it's very hard to find it, but uh, it's, it's still there. So mobile apps, yeah. For example, uh, if you want to, um, if there is a program open today, and this program is the, ha the, the for example, yahoo.com, it has like a, a mobile application. The weakest point in all the web applications is the, their mobile applications because they don't like the mobile. The mobile developers are not. I mean, they are not security aware. So mo they do. They do a lot of mistakes. So they do a lot of security uh, mistakes. They don't uh, consider in most of the websites. They don't consider security. So they will just um, end up having a lot of vulnerabilities in this uh, mobile application or the APIs that's talking to the web server. So we have here the, uh, the first challenge. Okay. Who can identify the vulnerability here? I have some, give, uh, some uh, stuff. Yeah. Can you see this, uh, the screenshot? It's clear? Patrick and Ahmed Abrila are excluded. Ibrahim Higazi as well. So. I just try. Any, any, any like uh, interesting parameter here? Maybe it's image data. The what? Image data. Yes, the image data. What about it? I don't know. Maybe we can somehow inject some. The what? Yes, it, you're right. It's, it's in this uh, image data. But where is the vulnerability? Okay, using this, this vulnerability, I was able to hack the entire company and it was in a pen test, not a bagant. So, uh, okay, who uh, heard about the data URI scheme? Data URI scheme. Nobody? Okay. Well, the vulnerability here, uh, Okay. Patrick, you're raising your hand? Okay. So the vulnerability here is uh, correct. It's in the, the image, uh, uh, image data. Uh, it's very simple. As you can see, there is a, a data URI scheme, and it's, uh, it, it, uh, it takes the input from the user. If you want to upload your profile, it will convert the photo to this data URI scheme to send it like in line, uh, not in a binary data. Uh, it, 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 uh, as you can see, there is like a data. It starts with data, and then the uh, the uh, the image, the, the file type, then the data encoded in base64. So all you have to do is leave the data and go to the image dot uh, image dot uh, uh, the file type, change it to text.php, for example, and take this uh, the uh, I can find yeah, take this. Uh, it, uh, encoded uh, encoded string and uh, take the uh, like PHP file or executable file, take it and encode it in base64 and put it instead of this photo uh, data, then you send the request to the server. So you will end up having a PHP shell on the server instead of a photo. Then uh, from the PHP uh, shell, you will just go and uh, you have now access to everything. So you just go and upload your uh, whatever meter printer or something. Then you get reverse connection to the server and you, 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 you own the server. So uh, this is a file upload functionality, which is data URI, scheme URI. 
Uh, okay. So this is just like a very, very, very basic introduction to uh, bug hunting. Uh, the thing that we should focus on is whenever you're submitting your report uh, and communicating with the triage team. So whenever you're submitting your report, uh, you should be review the program policy first. So for example, today I go to uh, Cobalt, uh, like Hacken or Hacker One. I subscribed as a researcher and I started seeing the public programs. And I, I, I decided to, uh, for example, uh, participate in um, um, what we have, like Rockstar Games Bug Bounty program. Uh, the first thing we will do, uh, we will review the policy of the program. Why, why it's, very, it's very important? Because you will know the in-scope and the out-of-scope items. For example, uh, sometimes the, 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 the scope that you should test or you should do your reports is the main websites, and that's it. If you find, so you don't have to use, for example, subregister to find like subdomains and, and waste your time. Because if even you find any vulnerability in the subdomains, they will not accept it. So you have, the, you have to check your scope and uh, it's, it will be defined there in their program policy. So you should, uh, the first thing you should do is reviewing the program uh, policy. Uh, the second thing is revalidate your report. Okay, you go to Rockstar Games, you read the policy, you find and XSS in the main website. You don't go directly and try to, uh, to report it. First, you have to make sure that this XSS, for example, is working in Google Chrome or uh, uh, Firefox, for example. If, if, for example, if you have like Internet Explorer and you find the, you, 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 you are able to reproduce this XSS on the Internet Explorer, but it, you cannot, uh, you should at least try it on another browser. And when, whenever you send the report, you said that I have tested this vulnerability on this browser. So we know that, uh, it, because sometimes it might be like uh, the, the XSS, for example, it might be working in Firefox and not working in Chrome. So you have to precise that. Be clear, whenever you, 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 uh, you're sending a report, you, you have to be very clear. In the title, you should write that this, XS, this uh, report is XSS in this place. For example, XSS in uh, the profile section in this parameter, for example. And uh, then you start, you tell us how to reproduce the, the vulnerability. For example, you, you, first you, uh, one, two, three, four, five. First you go to the profile section, you go to first name, for example, you put the payload and you pro provide us with the payload, then you click submit, then the XSS will trigger. Be as clear as that. Uh, be patient whenever you send the vulnerability because we, we for example, in Hacker One we, we receive like thousands of vulnerabilities every day. So sometimes some guys are just like every five minutes, they keep sending us like, is there any update? Is there any update? Like, yes, we, whenever there is update, we will tell you. We will not hide it. So be very patient while, do, while hunting. Don't rush, don't... Uh, uh, just uh, make noise for the uh, triage team because they're handling other reports, they're handl handling another uh, issues with the other hackers. So uh, you, you should be patient. Okay, so uh, this, I think now we have an idea about uh, bug hunting and uh, uh, what should we do today? So whenever, who want to start his journey? I mean, who want to, to be a bug hunter here? You have, <laughs> I mean, who want to be a bug hunter from, like, who, st who want to start this, like, who want to gain money from finding vulnerabilities in the websites? No one? Everybody. Every, okay, can you raise his hands, please? Okay. So, uh, <laughs> we have, uh, like, 15 bug hunters here. Mashallah, they're doing, like, um, a very, very big money, but they, very, they are so humble, so they act like they... Uh... So, yeah, whoever who wants to start his journey in bug hunting, he should start today doing this stuff. It's a very simple task. The first thing is read the How to Become a Hacker. This is a very, very, very good article. It's just like three pages. It will explain you the hacker mindset, how the hacker mind operates, how you should 
uh, while doing hack it's not technical it's just like um, like philosophy the philosophy of hacking it's very important you should you should take a look at this uh, article you just go to google and write how to become a hacker and you'll find it in the first result yeah so the um, there is a very, very good book called The Web Applications Hacker's Handbook. So whoever wants to start his journey in web application hacking, hacking websites, hacking web servers, hacking the mobile APIs, uh, anything related to the web, he should, uh, learn it. we should read this book, get a copy of this book and read it. It's, um, it's like 700 page web uh, book, but it's very, very good. And it's, it, it has everything, almost everything. It's, it's kind of old book, but it has everything uh, inside. Um, you should also download and install any version of, uh, like, uh, any vir uh, virtualization software, like VMware or uh, VirtualBox. Uh, VirtualBox is free, so you just go to virtualbox.org and download VirtualBox, install it, then you get uh, a Kali Linux. Kali Linux is uh, a Linux distribution, and it has a lot of hacking tools inside for uh, web hacking, network hacking, uh, uh, mobile hacking, almost everything. So you should, uh, it's free, so you go to Kali, uh, Kali uh, website and you download this, uh, the ISO or whatever, whatever uh, uh, I mean, uh, any uh, uh, type of uh, file, you, you, it's available there. You download it and install it. Yeah, after uh, downloading Kali Linux, you, you just see the tools. You just try to see the manual file of these tools. You, uh, you, you check what these tools does and uh, the functionality of uh, each tool. Yeah, then you have to keep an eye on all hacking news for, to, just to uh, motivate yourself. For example, you go to Hacker One activity and see people making like thousands of dollars every day. This will motivate you at least. Uh, also, you have to uh, participate in uh, hacking forums, uh, hacking events like this event, like any other events like, uh, ma uh, like uh, CTFs. Uh, this will uh, also like, uh, uh, improve your skills in hacking. Uh, you have also, the, there, is like, um, there is a lot of channels, for example, Bug Bounty Forum. It's like a group of bug hunters. They have a, a, a Slack channel. Uh, you can uh, uh, Google them. And uh, from there, you will see the, uh, I mean, a lot of interesting uh, discussions, a lot of interesting tools they released uh, in this channel. Uh, so this is, uh, this is all today, uh, what I have today. So this is my contact. And uh, thank you very much for uh, listening.